So I have some uh, documentation here. This is a troubleshooting guide, so I think we'll use that. Uh, it says check the power supplies, but I've done that. Um, and then it says uh, do this cool thing. There's a, a jumper uh, over here by the crystal. And this jumper is normally connected between uh, CP and COMP. And it says change the COMP to PL, which is right here. So I've moved the jumper over to PL. And then it says to take a look at the front panel. Okay, so we'll, we'll prop this up and do that. And um, you should get a zero, zero, zero and a, and a plus and minus flashy thing here. Um, so that's good. So supposedly this jumper somehow separates the analog section from the digital section. So you can troubleshoot the uh, display section directly and then the analog section directly. So, uh, so this is good news. That's checking out. Now it also gives you some wave, some, ah, this all below. it gives you some waveforms. So let's take a look at some waveforms it, it asks you to do. Um, we will put ground on here. Uh, it's got one waveform here. It says verify you have a hundred kilohertz clock, which is the CL test point. And uh, we will, go here for, um, and uh, that clock checks out fine at 100 kilohertz. So it says then go to test point TC, let's see, no wait a minute, uh, to PL. Go to test point PL, which is this one, and it says we should get a 400 millisecond period. So we have to zoom way back out here, 400 milliseconds. Yeah, so I'm at 200 milliseconds, so we have a 400 millisecond uh, half period. So that's good. Then it says look at TC. Uh, we will go to TC. And it says uh, you should have uh, 200 milliseconds. Okay, spot on. And it says go to RS. So we go to RS, and it says you should be getting a little pulses. And if we zoom way in, oh, there we go, there are little pulses. And it says those should be about 100 microseconds. We're 100 microseconds per division. And when we get one, yeah, it's about 100 microseconds. So that's working good. Okay. Then it says that we should be looking at, let's see, maintained jumper. And then look at U9 pin 3. Okay, U9 pin 3. All right, so can we? Let's see if I can get this all on camera. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, U9 pin 3. So U9 is. Uh oh, I've got the wrong. Uh, one, two, three. I've got the wrong. So the, the user manual has a bunch of these. Uh, can you see that? Yeah. Um, has a bunch of these layouts. And there's multiple revisions of this board. And this is not the correct revision of this particular board. So I'm going to have to go back and look at the user manual and try to figure out where U9 is. Or can I just use my app? Uh, I, I want it printed out anyway. So let me go print it out and uh, come back. Okay, just my luck. Um, this says it's a um, 3465A, but the board is a 3465B. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this is the uh, layout of a B version. And that's the board I've got is a B version board. So I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, either the front was changed or they were just going through the cycle of changing over but they hadn't ran out of front panels yet or something I don't know anyway it is a B so the troubleshooting will be different um, yeah so I guess I'll follow the troubleshooting guide for the B version which seems to be much much more in extensive than the uh, than the A version was so so that's kind of weird 
Uh, but um, I did get a bunch of schematics and block diagrams and stuff for this thing, so yeah, that will help out. Um, some things are common though. I mean, obviously I was measuring it like an A and we're getting the right waveforms and stuff. And the jumper thing it was the same between the A and the B versions, so well, that's pretty much the same. Um, yeah, but the B version has some things that, some tr troubleshooting steps that uh, can't quite figure out quite yet, but uh, yeah, we'll go, we'll go from there. All right, um, so whenever you're troubleshooting something, it's kind of nice to know what it is that it's supposed to be doing, um, kind of get a, a, general, a general feel for it, because this thing, it's difficult to troubleshoot because it's kind of all kind of intermixed. Um, now, when you put that jumper on there, what you're doing is you're breaking it right here. You're, you're letting this operate all on its own. So basically, this part of the system is working fine. And so the problem is somewhere over here. So, so what, are the, what do these two systems basically do? We'll call this the analog system and the digital system. The digital system counts. It's just a counter. It's a counter and a latch. And so it counts and then it puts the number there. And if it counts correctly, it will display a voltage over there or a, you know, a ohmage or something. But it's, it's just a counter. And it counts between two pulses, right? You give it one pulse and then it counts and you give another pulse and it stops counting. And so it's relying on the distance between these two pulses in order to give you the right value over here. So what are these magic two pulses? Well, those two pulses come out of a comparator. And um, it's a dual slope integrator. So you integrate up and then you integrate down and it's gonna count when a comparator fires on the, on the way up and a comparator fires on the way down. And uh, it's going to have a slope. And so it's called a dual slope integrator. So one slope is fixed. You know what that slope is. And that's set with a 10 volt reference. And then the other slope is the voltage that you've input. And so the two slopes will be different and the length of time will be different and that will be displayed as voltage on the output. So anyway, when you break this right here, you're letting this run separately. And so it seems to be working just fine. So somehow our, our dual slopey thing isn't working right. And, uh, we can look at the uh, comparator uh, output, right? And so uh, this is a lot of stuff going on here. Um, the input comes in here and then it goes through and uh, there is an output for the comparator, which is this thing over here, okay? So this is the, the output of the whole comparator system. And we can turn this on and hook up our ground to the right spot here. Put around here. Okay, so we we are getting a signal on our comparator, and that's when it's operating correctly. Well, the the comparator will fire, and you can see that it's kind of doing weird things. Um, the, uh, I need to lower you down here. The, the display is, is sort of fluctuating, which means we're getting comparators signals and it's counting between those two and we're getting some arbitrary count, count between the two. And there's no decimal place and stuff. So obviously something funny going on. So the timing is all off and everything, but it is, it is giving pulses. Now, um, it, under certain circumstances, it won't give you into these pulses. Now, um, if I place it, I, I haven't, uh, I put it in AC. Now when I hook it up to DC, it freezes. I don't know if you can see that up there. Ah, sorry about this terrible camera work. But if you put it into DC mode, it freezes. I, if you put it into AC mode, it's sometimes sort of, you can get it to sort of get into this weird mode where it, where it sort of uh, it sort of free runs, it gets lights gets get gets noisy, whatever. Anyway, the long story is that the front end's not working. We're not getting a comparator signal, and our dual slope integrator's not doing its dual dual slope type thing. Okay. All right. If you get one of these things, the input comes here, and there's a whole bunch of switchy things that happen over here. There's some attenuators and stuff. I'm not convinced that the attenuators are working quite yet, 
it may be that the whole front end is just the problem. There might be just a bad switch. There's a whole bunch of switches in here you can see. It could be that one of these switches is dirty or not making contact or broken or whatever. It, it might be as simple as that. I, I don't quite know yet. Um, but basically in volts mode, this whole page is basically ignored and you go to page two. And on page two, you come into this uh, uh, FET input op amp. Uh, they had to do their own, so it's a, a dual FET package here. But anyway, it's a FET input op amp. And uh, there's a test point here that's the DC test point. So you can see if you're getting a DC signal in, and that doesn't seem to be working. And then it goes into the uh, integrator. So this is the integrator right here. There's a 0.44 microfarad capacitor that's the integrating capacitor. And then there's a bunch of FET switching. So this FET switch brings in the plus 10. So you integrate in one direction with the plus 10. And then you integrate with the, uh, uh, with the signal. And it can be switched on and off with this FET switch. And then there's an auto zeroing. Uh, that happens here, and once this, once this dual slope happens, uh, it gets amplified. So this is a very small signal here. We get we amplify it up times 40 and times 1,000. No, times 100. I'm sorry. So there's a times. Uh, ooh, that's a lot. Times 40 and then times 100. So 40 hundred, right? 4,000. And uh, you can monitor this point here to see if your if your uh, comparator is triggering. So um, this is uh, looking at zero crossings when it goes through this stuff. So there's a dual slope integrator, and uh, the comparator is here. So this this thing uh, flip flops on the output. So you can see what's going into the comparator, and then it and then it goes off. You can look at this test point here and see if it's if it's doing its auto zeroing, um, and it's not working. <laughs> it's just not working. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to troubleshoot is like when I bring in the signal, like how far does it come in and when when does it die? Do we have uh, the control signals that are operating correctly? Um, my gut feel says it's either a switch or a FET. <laughs> okay, that's what my gut feel says, but. You never know. My gut's been wrong before. Um, so anyway, need to uh, need to dig in some more, and, and uh, this is not going to be an easy one to to troubleshoot. All right. So I'm monitoring the output of the dual slope integrator, and it's just pegged high. Okay. So you don't see any ramps up and ramps down, ramps up, ramps up, ramps down. So here is the input to the integrator. And I am going to inject a signal into the circuit and uh, we'll see if it does a dual slopey thing. Uh, yeah, there you go. See, it's sloped up, sloped down. Yeah, there we go. So it knows how to, do, it knows how to do slopes. <laughs> and so, um, show you what I was doing here. Like I say, this is the, oops, that, that one. This is the uh, integrator here. Uh, that 0.4 microfarad capacitor is this big giant thing right here in the middle, very conspicuous. Um, so really high precision uh, capacitor, 0.4 microfarads, and it's giant. So it's, it's, it's probably temperature compensated and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, uh, that is uh, this capacitor right here. And I'm monitoring the output. That's, that's the one that would ramp up and ramp down if it was working correctly. And the input comes here. And so JB, so the jumper A and jumper B, I just injected a signal on jumper B and I monitored jumper A and we saw it work. So, so I've just proven that this op amp works. Um, and we could monitor the, uh, monitor this point here too, as I slope it up and down, make sure that's working. So, Let's do that, comp TP. Let me get another probe out, another channel. Comp, where did I see that? I saw that somewhere. It wasn't where, uh, here it's over here. Comparators over here. All right, we'll put this on. And we will put it here in the middle. 
and we will do the dual slopey thing and see if it fires and it does so let me show you that um so i'm going to do the dual slopey thing and you can see that basically when we go through zero it's firing okay so it's zero detecting so um we have now said that this whole circuit works in here now we need to figure out what's going on over here uh could be that uh, it's not turning on these fats could be that the inputs not getting into the input uh even if it wasn't getting any input i would expect it to like show some voltage on the front panel um, but it it may need these fets to be operating correctly too i'm not quite sure what this does let's hear the from s the signal comes in here and there's another signal that comes in here this might be the zeroing yeah i'm not quite sure anyway uh, there's a balance adjust too to take out this, uh, make this very, very accurate. Anyway, uh, oops, more, uh, more study is needed.